Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the domain and range from a graph. One of the biggest questions that I get from students, how do you determine the domain and the range? So remember, domain is going to be your set of all your x values. Range is going to be the set of all your y values, or the set of all input and the set of all output. So when we're looking at a graph, the main important thing that we want to do here is identify what are the x values and what are the y values. So remember, a graph is set up of an infinite many, an infinite amount of points. So here, this point is x comma y. So basically, when I'm looking at the domain, what I'm looking is for, what are all the values for x? Now, I don't have a scale here, but look, you know, it doesn't really, let's just say I'm 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I guess that could be a little bit more could be a little confusing for students. So let's pretend here is 1. Well, you can see also I have a point when x equals 2. I also have a point when x equals 3. But not only do I have a point for 1, 2, and 3, I have them for the negative. I also have, what about 2.5? What about 2 and 2 thirds? What about 2 and 2 sixths? So between my integers, I also have points. There's an infinite many points. And when you learn in geometry, infinite many points make up this graph. The other thing that's really important when looking at a graph to determine domain range is the arrows. Remember, what this arrow tells you is this graph is going to continue going up. And not only is that graph continually going up, it's also continuing going to the right. So sometimes, you know, domain and range, a lot of times when we look at like coordinate points and look at you know, a table or mapping, we always look into what is the domain, right? Or what is the range? But a lot of times when you're looking for the graph, the best thing to do is say, what is not in the domain and what is not in the range. So if you look at this graph, you kind of look at the end behavior, you can see this graph is going to keep on going up and over to the right. So as if we were to expand my x um, axis and expand my y axis, you would know this graph as we keep on going to like million, two million, infinity, whatever. This graph is going to keep on going into the right. So there's really no restrictions on how far this graph is going to go up and to the right. The same works for how far this graph is going to go up and to the left. It's going to keep on going over and over and over here. So when you're looking at the domain, you're saying the set of all x values. Well, is there any value on this x, inter x axis where x is not going to have a coordinate point? Well, as these go to infinity, your graph is going to go to infinity. So guess what? For every x value, positive or negative, you're going to have a point on the y. Uh, you're going to have a y coordinate that's going to be a point on the graph. So our domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or a lot of times when we write that, not in interval notation, we could use um, the double lined r, which represents all real numbers. Now the range is going to be, oh, I didn't do that. Hey, good for you. The range in this case is going to be the set of all y values. So now we're going to basically be looking at the y-axis. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So what we see is the graph is at 0, and then the graph goes up. So at each of the point, let's say, you know, range of y, is there a point on the graph where y equals 4? Well, yeah, there's actually two of them, right? And let's just say they're both, you know, negative 3 and 3. But as I keep on going on the y-axis, as I keep on getting larger and larger numbers on the y-axis, my graph is also going to be increasing. So there's always going to be points to the left and to the right for every value of y. So then we start going in the opposite direction. Well, what about when I go negative? And what you could see is as I keep on getting farther and farther down, my graph goes to 0 and then rebounds. There's no y coordinates for any negative numbers. right? So if I say y equals negative 1, there's no point on the graph for y equals negative 1. Therefore, the lowest value that my range goes down to, the set of all y values, is 0. The largest value is going to be infinity. Okay. Um, another way to go ahead and write this um, is by using your inequalities, which we could um, say 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to infinity. Okay? I don't know how your teacher wants you to write it. Um, but we, I, in, in our upper level of math, we prefer rain, um, set notation. But a lot of times, inequalities is commonly used as well. OK, so now let's go and look at this graph. And again, what you can see is you know, if I had a nice little table, you can see this graph starts at 0, and then it infinitely goes into the right. So when we're looking at the domain, remember domain is the set of all x values. The graph 
is not going at all to the left. There's no negative numbers. Remember what I said? You know, sometimes rather than thinking of what is the domain, think of what's not in the domain. Well, there's no negative x values that, make, that are part of this graph. So I know that my domain is not going to include any negative numbers. It's going to start at the x is 0, is the lowest number of the domain. Then I look at, well, at the value 1, is there a number in the domain? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 1.5? Yes. 1.17643? Yes. Right there. And then as I keep on going larger and larger numbers on the x-axis, the graph is going to continue going that direction. So I'm always going to have a point. Um, I'm always going to have a coordinate point for an x as I go to the right. So it's going to go to infinity. Then we look at the range. And what you can notice here, oh, let's do uh, our notation. So if I was going to do domain, I would do 0. Or in um, inequality, I'd do 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to infinity. Notice domain, I'm using x. Range, I'm using y. So for the range here, um, for the range, OK, so the range is going to be the y coordinates. Again, you see that range. I'm not going to any negative numbers, but I'm going up. And even though this graph is very slightly going up, it still is going up. I'm going to have to go really far to the right for it to go up really high. But it is slowly, slowly increasing. So my range is going to be from 0 to infinity as well. Or 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to infinity. Or less than infinity. I guess it can't be equal to infinity, right? That doesn't really make sense. OK, so now let's go ahead and get into uh, this example. Um, so go ahead and look at this example. Um, again, the domain. You can see that your domain is constantly getting larger as it goes to the left, constantly getting larger as it goes to the right. So therefore, my domain is going to keep on expanding. So my x values, there's really no restrictions. As my x. Um, as my x-axis keeps on getting wider and wider, this graph is going to keep on expanding. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity, or um, all real numbers. My range, you can see here, is now the graph goes all the way down. So my negative numbers goes all the way down to negative infinity, right? Um, there's no restriction. This graph is going to keep on getting lower and lower. So the y values, you can see for every negative y value, I have two points. But as I keep on going up, you can see that the largest this graph gets to is only going to be 6. Right? All right, let's write this as all real numbers as well. So it only goes, the y values only go up to 6, whereas the x values are going to always be increasing. My y values are going negative, but they only stop at 6. So in the range, I'm going to do from negative infinity to positive 6. Or I would do negative infinity is less than y, which is less than or equal to 6. OK, um, into our last one here. Now we have a nice little um, half circle, um, semicircle. And again, when we look at this, you can see that my domain is, instead of now, there's no arrows on this graph. right? So it's kind of similar to this one. Um, oh, I guess range. Oops, I forgot about that. This is included. 0 is a point. So infinity is not included. Range should be included. So when we have a point that's part of the domain, and it's included, then we're going to use the bracket. It means it's included. Um, ray infinity, infinity, you can't include infinity, so we're going to use brackets. Should have been very careful with that. So here, we don't have any arrows. So we're just going to look at, all right, so what are the x values then that are part of this graph? Well, the graph is not expanding past negative 2, nor is expanding past 2. So the only x values that are part of this graph is between negative 2 and 2. So I'm just going to say the domain. Those are points here, so that's between negative 2 and 2. Or you could say negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 2. The range, oops, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. The range is only between the points of 0 and negative 3. It doesn't go any higher than 0. It doesn't go any higher or lower than negative 3. So that's going to be between 0 and negative 3. Or 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to negative 3. Okay. So main important thing, guys, really make sure I, I should have uh, made sure I emphasized this before. Make sure you emphasize if you're dealing with um, brackets or parentheses. Basically, whenever you have infinities or negative infinities, you're going to be using the parentheses. And if, as long as it's a part of the number, it's going to be 
um, included. This would be not included if this was an open circle. If that was an open circle, then I would use a parentheses. Just a nice little FYI. I didn't do an example like that. Um, oh, I should have done that one over there. That would have been a good idea. But anyways, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you identify or determine the domain and range of a graph. Thanks.